We are back on Inside Politics today talking with MTSU professor Dr. John Vile about the U.S. Supreme Court. Dr. Vile, there is also a case that the, the court's going to take up that involves uh, voting rights, uh, particularly in North Carolina. Some Republicans there in the legislature say the legislature's power to redraw congressional districts is supreme and not subject to state court or con state constitutional review or challenge. Taking more broadly, some people are concerned if, if they rule in favor, the court does, of these Tar Heel state plaintiffs. This could mean the legislature could pick its own presidential electors in the future, despite what the voters say. Is this a pretty ominous potential case? It would be very consequential, uh, and again, would have would have impacts far beyond that of North Carolina. I'm there are three justices, I believe, who have indicated some. Uh, support for this theory. I don't think there's a majority for it right now, but we will see. LBGQ rights are also on the up for the court this year. Uh, in this particular case, it involves a web designer who is refusing her services to a same-sex couple despite a state law that says that's discrimination. The high court in the past has been protective of LBGQ rights and recently individual religious freedoms. That seems to make this case sort of take those two things and put their heads together. Is this, is this a, a chance where the court's going to have to make a definitive choice between the two? You know, it actually sort of piggybacks on an earlier case involving a cake designer who said, you know, he not only provided wedding cakes, but he was intimately involved in the theme and that sort of thing. Supreme Court has been very supportive of First Amendment free exercise rights, and here's a potential conflict between that and the LGBTQ rights. Now, later in the term, the court's also going to take up a social media case. Uh, in this particular case, whether social media groups can allow people to put up uh, uh, terrorist propaganda, uh, put up, up on those sites. Some people are suing about that. Uh, both people on both the right and the left uh, in this country are not happy with social media. Does this mean we may have a ruling that doesn't just go 6-3, it might go 7-2 or 8-1? I just don't know. Part of it is, you know, to what degree is the platform itself complicit in the message that it hosts? And, you know, or to what degree, if the liability is there, does it rest on those who are actually making the post? The court's always had its disagreements, but it seems to me more of these disagreements are coming out publicly. Is there any sign that the justices are not getting along privately either? Well, you know, CNN had a program on on Sunday night in which uh, they quoted a fairly prominent commentator on the court who basically said, these justices don't like each other. And one of the fascinating things about, you know, two justices who have recently departed from the court and both died, Justice Scalia and Justice Ginsburg, were as polar opposite politically as they could be, but they liked to hang out together, went to opera, shared many common interests, and that, that component seems to be missing. It also appears the public is not necessarily happy with the trend of the court. Uh, one poll has their support among the public as low as 25%. Uh, is that about the lowest you can ever remember it being? It is. Now, you know, we, sh we should add that neither of the other two branches that's particularly high, particularly Congress. You know, it's interesting in Congress, everybody always bad-mouthing the institution and saying how bad it is, but if you ask them about their own individual members, they're usually fairly supportive. But what does it mean if all three of our branches of government are, are in low repute or low respect among our members of, of, the, of the public? I mean, if all three of them are bad, what part of the, does the government itself become in question? You know, I, I guess I'm sort of with Winston Churchill on this. He used to say that democracy, Republican democracy, was a, was a, was the worst form of government that we had, except for all the others. And <laughs> absent an alternative, I think it's probably still the best. Should the justices have a strategy to do something to restore more public confidence, or is that something they're not supposed to be concerned about? It's supposed to be above the fray. Well, certainly you're not supposed to interpret the Constitution by reading public opinion polls. On the other hand, there's always been an element of judicial restraint, judicial uh, prudence on the court. Uh, individuals often who were very liberal or conservative before they got to the court sometimes said, even when they got to the court, said, well, these are decisions for the political branches rather than for us. Another recent poll found that 42% of the public or those responded said the high court has become too conservative. 
Are the conservatives on the court perhaps pushing their agenda too far and too fast? It's possible. And of course, part of what's happened here, if you remember, you know, at the end of Obama's term, he actually nominated Merrick Garland, who, in, in my judgment, was a very worthy, you know, judicial candidate. He didn't get that, but in this, in the last year or less than a year of the Trump administration, Republicans were able to push through a second nominee. So part of the imbalance here is coming from the the actions of a very partisan uh, Senate. Uh, if President Joe Biden uh, doesn't do well in the midterm elections, he still has two more years in office. Uh, if there happens mm -hmm. to become a vacancy on the Supreme Court uh, between now and 2024, is there any way he can get that filled uh, if the Democrats don't keep control of the Senate in the 2022 election? You know, I, I, I don't know. Certainly, Obama did not have much success in his last year. Uh, but, I, you know, I would caution here, if either side pushes partisanship too far, the, the, there's one proposal for a constitutional amendment that intrigues me, which basically says president makes a nomination and the Senate acts within 60, the Senate has to take a vote within 60 days. And if the vote is no, and there's another nomination, they get 30 days on the next go round to do something to just assure that, you know, each, each nomination is not, can we outweigh this president in the hopes of getting one from our own party? Not to get too picky, but 60 days would be one of the fastest uh, confirmation dates of anybody in terms of how long it takes to get somebody through the Senate. Uh, you think either party it, would really be in favor of something like that? Even maybe, maybe, well, maybe make it longer. You know, it, it's not so much, you know, it may, maybe it should be 90 days instead. I don't know. But I, I, I do think, you know, I think there comes a point where just inaction becomes a form of action. And, you know, Senator, they should be, be willing to go on the record one way or the other as to what they support. Dr. John Vial, MTSU political science professor, is our guest on Inside Politics. We've been talking about the Supreme Court and its new term, which began this past week. Back to continue our conversation after this break.